Let's get down to business. How do you set your pricing for being an English teacher? You've set up your website and now it's crucial that you set your list of pricing. Whether you advertise that to students or not, you need to have it in your head before you start trying to get students because then you'll kind of scramble for a number, pluck it out the air, hope for the best, hope they'll say yes and that's just not a way to create a growable, profitable business. And if you're not making a growable, profitable business, you've just got a hobby. From my day job, we teach a certain industry how to set their prices and I realized a lot of what they do is completely completely different to English teaching but a lot of the principles that we say to get them to make their business more successful while still providing their clients with a really good value can apply to teaching and that student teacher relationship as well so I'm going to share a little bit of what I've learned in my current company but on the angle of how it translates to English English teaching. Point number one is not to undersell yourself. Now you don't need me to tell you that you need to do your research. I know you're going to research the industry, check out what kind of the going rate is for teachers, but bear in mind prices that are advertised on places like Cambly are prices that they take a cut from. So whatever you're, you get from them. They charge per minute, which is a terrible way to structure a business anyway. And any company that puts you on their platform and just gives you a bank of students that, well, gives you to a bank of students that they can choose you from, from other teachers, they're going to take a cut from in order to make their money. So you can charge more than what those platforms are offering, knowing that you've cut out the middleman and know that that's not ripping the students off. You're providing them with a bespoke service. The issue is I think teaching largely attracts empathetic people and it doesn't take much for a student to tug at the heartstrings that might make you think, oh, maybe if I just give them a discount. Don't. Don't give discounts. There are other ways to volunteer and give your time as a teacher to people who dearly, dearly need it. That's a story for another day. We're just talking about this build business that you're building. And the other thing to remember is don't worry too much if you think you've got it wrong. When you've done your research and put the price out there, if no one's biting and no one's responding to that price, can lower it. If everyone's saying, oh yeah, that's really good, I want it, think mm, maybe instead of filling my books with all these people straight away, I should review my pricing if you're selling it too low. So now you've done your research and you kind of have an idea at, based on your experience, what you can value yourself at. Add a little bit to whatever you think you value yourself at because people always undervalue them. Correction, women, women, if you are a woman, charge more than you think you can charge. Not by an extortionate amount, just a small increment and then you're probably more in the correct ball ballpark for what you actually deserve for your teaching prowess. So now you can create a menu. You don't want to just have one set price. You don't want to say an English session with me is this price for half an hour and this price for an hour because different students have different needs. Teaching a child for half an hour who needs prompts, games, props, a lot of support, a lot of energy to bring their attention back to the screen, a lot of preparation to make a lesson that's to their level and that's progressing them at a rate that's reasonable is a different 30 minutes than an advanced student who's maybe lived in America for a couple of years but now he's back in his home country and he just wants to just wants to keep his English cleaned up so he just wants to chat with you about current affairs about his hobby that takes no prep at all so that is not the same 30 minutes of your time as the 30 minutes teaching the child because you're going to have to prep so much for teaching the child so that is more of your time Likewise, if you've done training to be an IELTS teacher, you have a higher skill so you can sell your IELTS lessons for more money because it's a more specific course that you've invested in the training to do. When you think about the main types of services you can provide and put set them out in a menu, that's when you can also build different packages, mix and match. You might also teach students who are learning English for their university. So they, they might ask you to review a university application. So you go away and you're taking time reviewing that application and then you're booking a call with them to go through that application, tell them what bits you'd recommend change what bits um, need elaborating on. Again, it's more of your time, more of your effort, so it's a more highly skilled service. 
So with a set of basic prices, you can then make packages and then from that you can do discounts. Now, what I said at the top was don't discount your overall price. That's not to say you can't make introductory discounts. For example, if a student who you have a really good rapport with has a friend, you might want to do a refer a friend discount. So they get 10% off their next class and their friend gets 10% off their first class if they sign as well. And I'd always recommend doing a free session to start with for them to get a taste of what your teaching's like. It's not really fair to charge someone just to meet you. My final tip on pricing is to tweak it as you go along. I mentioned this at the start, when you first set out your pricings, you might have to do a few adjustments here and there. But after that, still put reminders in your diary to tweak your prices. For example, after the first six months, have a bit of an audit, have a bit of a review on how your pricing's doing. Is it working for you? Is it working for your students? And then again, at 12 months, once you've been teaching for 12 months, you are a teacher with one year's experience. And um, that's different to being a teacher that's just starting out and your prices should reflect that. I know it's scary to think of approaching students and telling them that there will be a raise in prices. So on my website, in the link below, I've added a template for you to use either in email or as a script to explain why your prices are going up to make that conversation as natural and as easy as possible for you. That's it for this week. Just research the industry, set your pricing menu, don't be afraid to tweak it and don't rest on your laurels after you've created a bank of students as well and remember to review those prices. My final little bonus tip of advice would be don't forget to sell your lessons in packages as well. So for example, a student does a free trial with you, you tell them the price is this much a session and this again is another opportunity to give a discount Count, but it is more reliable money for you so give them a tiny discount if they book four sessions for the month because people can be unreliable and be flaky whereas if they've paid it they're more likely to turn up and even if they don't you know you've had that income you know what income you've got to live off that month because you've already got it whereas if you just tell someone to pay on the day or right before the lesson it's just much more unreliable obviously and I would say I never gave refunds if somebody couldn't make a lesson but I'm not a monster if someone said there was an extenuating circumstance I cannot make the lesson today I would still give them that lesson another time knowing they've already paid for it don't forget to give the option of group lessons as well it makes it more affordable for the students and it doesn't take any more of your time to give a cheaper version of a lesson what do you think have you already set your pricing is it a lot different to how I've said to do it did you want to charge by the minute. I think charging by time in that way where time either clocks up or clocks down is just not an effective business model. It's always something we advise people again in my against. <laughs> in my business. Yeah, let me know below how your research for pricing has gone. Do you prefer teaching one student at a time or multiple students? Do you prefer teaching adults or kids? If you pop it down below, again, other teachers might have some students that don't fit them that are perfect for you and they could put you in touch. Next week, I'll be talking about organically marketing your English teaching business. And this is my favorite bit. This is the social media, the email campaigns, all the fun, creative stuff. And I will see you there.